I, 30 male, and my girlfriend, 29 female, have been dating for two years now. I recently took my girlfriend on a getaway weekend, nothing fancy, just a four-day weekend to the Hilton Hotel, going on fun outings she mentioned she wanted to do, like ice skating, dancing, painting, and other fun activities. I'm in love with this beautiful Mm -hmm. woman. Before we started dating, we worked at the same job together, and we've been friends for a long time. I soon grew a crush on her because she was so cool to talk to and be around. I was also friends with her ex-boyfriend. They'd been broken up for a year or two by the time I started liking her. And I wanted to ask the ex-boyfriend, since we were friends, would it be okay if I asked her on a date? <laughs> he said obviously and had no problems with me yeah. and her dating <laughs> one another. Yeah. That's a weird answer. <laughs> <laughs> a day later, I asked her to a drive-in theater movie and she said yes. And after the first movie date, we made the drive-in theater our weekend thing. And we would also go out to eat or go to comic conventions and anywhere we spend time together. One day, I wanted to make it official, so I asked her if she'd like to be my girlfriend. She said she wanted to just remain friends. Although I was hurt, I absolutely was fine with her decision, and we still continued our weekend movie nights and outings. But every once in a while, she would show signs that she liked me. She wouldn't let me talk to any other girl, and if I mentioned that a girl was cute, she would say under her breath, she better stay away from my man. So catching these hints... I stopped talking to other girls and didn't bother to ask any girl out, thinking she wanted to go out with me. I asked her to be my girlfriend again, but again, she said she just wanted to be friends. A few weeks later, she would quit the job that we worked at together and find a new job, but we would still hang out on the weekends. One day, I was out running errands and I saw her on a date with someone. I didn't approach them, of course, but I have a rule not to go out to movies or any dates like activities with a girl who has a boyfriend or is dating in respect for the boyfriend. So I stopped inviting her on our weekend hangouts without telling her why. She didn't mind because her attention was on the other guy. I wanted to give her and the guy I thought she was dating their space. Three months passed, us not texting or hanging out. And out of the blue, she texts me asking if we could hang out to catch up and chat. I said yes, of course, and we did after that. We started hanging out, going to the movies together. She would come over to my place almost every day and we would watch movies there until 12 or 1 a.m. And once again, she would drop hints like she liked me, but I wasn't going to ask her out a third time just in case I was wrong. If she liked me, she would have to ask me out. And after four months, she finally did. I said yes almost immediately, which brings us to... <laughs> Chill. Stand up, bro. Chill, bro. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> which brings us to her telling me after our weekend getaway that the entire time we were hanging out before we got together, she was dating and sleeping with other guys. And around the time I asked her ex-boyfriend if I could date her, they were still sleeping together while we were going on. Wait. (laughs) Yeah. He said, go ahead. I beg your pardon? (laughs) While we were going to the drive-in theaters and spending the weekends together. Oh, gosh. Ow. Even during the months of her coming over to my place and hanging out until the midnight after the three-month gap of us not talking, she was still sleeping with other guys. She told me she didn't want any other girls talking to me. She liked me the entire time we were hanging out. She just wasn't ready for a relationship. But once she went to her new job, she jumped into a four-month relationship. Even the night before she asked me to be her boyfriend, she went on a date and slept with a guy, and she was hoping for a second date with him, but he ghosted her. So she told me that she liked that I was nice to her, but wanted to have sex without any attachment, which is why she slept with the other guy while hanging out with me. In the beginning of the relationship, she told me she danced with other guys at nightclubs while out with friends, kissed a guy, and would get into random dude's cars when she needed a ride. So am I the asshole for wanting to break up with her after finding out she used me and making me her last resort? Thank you everyone for the advice and the thoughts. After a long conversation, I've decided to break up with her. Yes. After asking what (laughs) her thought process is in using and stringing me along for so long, she simply told me she wanted to have her cake and eat it too. Yes. Well, I'm actually like how honest this chick is. Yeah, she's brutally honest. She's very honest. Also, I'm no longer friends with her ex-boyfriend. I was asked why I would ask her ex-BF if it would be okay to ask her on a date. He and I were close friends in our early 20s, and out of respect for him, I wanted to make sure it wouldn't be awkward to see his friend and ex together. I also asked my ex, why did she reach out to me after the two months that I gave her and the guy she was dating space? She told me that she was curious on what I was doing too, and she missed hanging out. She stopped talking to that guy she met at her new job months before she reached out. But a few weeks after she reached out to me, she slept with him again. She said she was in fact using me for that type of attention that I was giving her. Most of the guys she slept with tricked her into having sex unprotected or having her buy the hotel rooms. 
There has been times when she sent a nude to another one of my best friends and wanted to sleep with another friend of mine because she gave her a compliment and she's never been hit on by a woman before. Oh. And oh, no. she, she only asked twist. me out because she was tired of being used and sleeping with random people and knew I wasn't going to use her like they did. But in the end, I couldn't stay with someone who couldn't respect me from the start. Thank you for listening and Facts. helping. Am I the asshole for asking my fiance to skip this year's Christmas family vacation because our baby is due? Justice. Context. <laughs> I have gone to Florida with his family for the past five years for at least part of Christmas. Every other year I've returned before to spend Christmas Day with my family. This year is the first time in a long time that all of the other siblings are able to overlap dates. My fiance has a major FOMO, which is why this is a sensitive subject. His parents have always been weird about keeping their family close. They never said it outright, but little things suggest they don't consider me completely part of their family yet since we aren't married. Also, my parents are overseas dealing with a grandparent emergency. My mom has been kept in the loop, though, and is trying to come back as soon as she can. So my fiance and I, 31 male and 31 female, are expecting our first baby due December 30th. His family has a vacation home in Florida, and they have gone every year during the holidays for about a month until after New Year. Wow. He agreed not to go this year because of the baby, but his family is insisting that he can go and come back on the 28th, which is ample time before the baby is due. So he bought a ticket for December 15th through the 28th. His reasoning that his parents really want him there and his siblings will also be there. He's bothering me a lot more than I thought because I know pregnancies are unpredictable, especially in the last trimester. And if anything happens leading up to the due date, I need him here. My parents are away until December 26th and my friends have their families, so I will be completely alone. Mm. The other reason, and I guess is the more selfish one, is that I'll be spending Christmas by myself. It's not the main reason why I'm bothered, but it's a small part of it. He's been spending Christmas every year in Florida since he was 15 there will be many more trips after the baby is born. I don't know why he has to go this year. Anytime I bring it up, it results in a very uncomfortable fight about my expectations to put me first rather than his parents. I don't even bring yeah. it up anymore. His parents have always been so kind to me, but they also don't see any problem. So I think I'm going crazy. Am I the asshole here? My abusive father showed up at my doorstep demanding to see my child after two years of no contact then threatened me when I said no. So I exposed him on social media. From the moment I was born, my father was nasty and violent with me. He was a narcissist who had my mother wrapped around his finger in a way where she dared not to protest him. He was abusive to her too, laying hands on her daily and treating her like a second-class citizen, making her work extra long hours so he could spend more time at home smoking grass and playing video games. Whenever I was alone with him, life was hell. I remember being two years old when he first hurt me. I think I peed the diaper when he was playing video games, and being angry and baked, he grabbed my wrist really hard when changing me, and it left a mark. Of course I was way too young to fully understand what was going on, but I did not like him. My mother could do very little to protect me from him as she was working so much, and she never even realized he was laying hands on me until I was five years old. It had been going on for three years at this point, and the first ever time she noticed it was when he accidentally did it too hard and there was evidence of it on my back. He was careful to never do it around her, and he would always tell me not to tell her, so I never did. I remember her having the argument about it with him. The argument ended up with him in custody after he laid hands on my mother very badly. She ended up in hospital. As luck would have it, my father had friends in law enforcement, and he got off scot-free. Seeing this demoralized my mother even further. She stayed with him. I never understood why at the time, but now it makes sense. His friends in law enforcement would have somehow managed to get him custody of me. Maybe that would not have been the case, but it was a risk my mother did not want to take. Life continued being bleak for me until I was 12. I was hurt a lot, basically weekly by him, and he sometimes even did it in front of my mother. She would try to protect me as best as she could, but she couldn't stop him all the time. She would end up getting hurt sometimes trying to physically shield me. She was a protective mother. At 12 years old life changed, and things went even further south. I thought I was already in hell, but it turns out I was wrong. I experienced rope for the first time on a night where he was both drunk and baked. I was asleep when he approached me. The feeling of him doing it while I silently cried into my pillow is still as fresh as ever. And that is how the rope started, which lasted for four years until I was 16. 12 to 16 was perhaps the darkest stage of my life. I got to see my peers in school growing up, having a fun time, at least being able to smile. I could never do this. I was always down, always miserable, always depressed. I would have told somebody if my father had not approached me during one of the arpes and threatened me. He told me after that if I ever told anyone, both my mother and I would regret it. These words alone were enough for me to never tell anyone. Not a single school counselor, 
not a single peer in school, teacher or even my own mother. She suspected it and did ask me about it a few times, and each time I told her nothing was going on. I think she knew deep down. I still wake up in the middle of the night crying to the feeling of being roped sometimes. The only reason the rope stopped is because when I turned 16, my father saw me as too old. This was perhaps as disgusting as anything he ever did. I trudged it out for another two years. My mother and I started secretly developing a plan around this time. She would leave him and I would move out at 18 and cut contact. We spent many nights concocting this plan, she contacted divorce lawyers she knew she could trust, and helped me look for places of my own as well as find a job. She was heaven sent. This plan worked, and thankfully he never caught us. Just a few weeks after my 18th birthday, which my father spent getting baked with his friends, I moved out and let my mother stay with me as she served him divorce papers. The divorce process went well, and he never found out where we resided. It took almost a full year for her to divorce him and he tried to be as shady as he could, but it worked out okay in the end for her. He got to keep the house, but she had enough money in her personal savings, which she kept as a secret from him, to rent her own place. It was pretty far from me but she really liked it, and even got to reconnect with her old best friend. The day we moved out was also the day I cut my father out of my life completely. I never wanted to see him again. He had caused me so much trauma that would never go away, but I was finally free. Well, my freedom was short-lived as ten months ago, about a year and a half after moving out, I got pregnant from a one-night stand. It was stupid I know, but we wore protection so I don't know how it happened. The baby's father wants no part of my baby daughter's life. I could have went to court over child support, but I did not bother. I vowed to raise her myself. She was born one month ago and she is the most precious thing in my life. I was not sure about being a mother at first, but when I looked into her hazel eyes for the first time, I cried of happiness. I was going to give her the life I never had. She would never have to face what my father put me through, or so I thought. Turns out, that disgusting vermin found me, I don't know how, but he did. I've moved apartments since the time I moved out originally, and now live over two hours away from him. I never share anything about my location on social media, and have never shared anything about my pregnancy. I have no idea how he found me, and much less how he knew about my daughter. Yesterday the doorbell rang, and I opened it without checking who it was. Of course, just as fate would have it, standing there was. My father. I instantly shut the door, yelling at him to get away, and we proceeded to have a screaming match through the door. I called him a stalker, a creep, a disgusting or pissed. He told me he just wanted to talk, and then slipped a letter underneath the door. I decided to open it and read it aloud. The letter boiled down to him admitting that what he did was wrong, telling me that he was sober now, and that he found me through friends of friends, and that he desperately wants to meet his granddaughter. I laughed through the door and told him no way in hell, then told him if he ever tried anything I would have him served with a restraining order. This was not enough to get him to back off though, and he told me that either I let him in nicely, or he was going to barge the door down and enter either way. I called the police and he started to shoulder the door. This woke my daughter up and I ran over to hold her while on the phone to the police. They came over, but he was gone before they got here. I told them that he was dangerous, but they told me that I had no valid reason to deny a grandparent a right to see their grandchild, especially considering he has no criminal record. That was a moment I regretted keeping quiet all the years. I hung my head low first, and thanked the officers for their time. I then went inside and went on social media. I decided that the world needs to know what my father did. I made a post on Facebook, exposing my father's full name and telling my story in full. I left no detail out, and explained what had happened just minutes ago with my father finding me and trying to break in. I went on to explain the police officer's reaction to. My post gained some traction and the comments were very supportive. My father has not been back yet, but I have gotten a few calls from random numbers. Of course I have declined every call, but I'm very worried for my safety. I'm looking at new apartments as I know I can't stay here. I'm getting sex on Facebook Marketplace and I'm actually so confused as to what the hell is happening. I listed this mirror that I'm selling. In the photo I list, obviously I have to be in the fucking photo. There's a mirror, so it's just kind of like a mirror selfie. I think absolutely nothing of this because I'm just trying to sell this damn mirror. The first incident started at Thursday at four in the fucking morning. This man who was interested in the mirror sends me a video of him and it looks like he's about to start like, you know, he's like, sorry, I'm really drunk right now. Like I'm just kind of drunk right now. Like I'm literally getting a sex from a man at four in the morning from Facebook Marketplace. Like I just thought this man wanted to buy my mirror. Uploaded the screenshot and all the screenshots I'm gonna be talking about to my Instagram story. Go look there. I immediately blocked because like, ew, what the hell? Like, why are you, like, why are you sending, first of all, if, what, what the hell? Why am I receiving that type of shit on Facebook Marketplace? A bitch is just trying to move and like get rid of her shit. And I genuinely thought the man was interested. And then I get that at like four in the morning. Like be so fucking for real. Genuinely just keeps getting worse. I, I get another DM about the mirror and it's like, are any of the girls in the mirror single? In the photo of the mirror, like, is anybody single? I'm like, can 
can can I, someone just buy the fucking mirror? Like, why do I need so many swipe ups of just like the randomest shit ever? Not this man literally trying to shoot his shot on Facebook Marketplace. Like, what the hell is happening? And mind you, like, no one's trying to buy the mirror. Like, imagine, like, I just answer his DM and I'm like, yeah, no, I'm single. And then it's like two years later, they're like, how'd you meet? I'm like, oh my God, this man like slid in my DMs, you know, asking if me or my best friend is single. And that's on Facebook fucking Marketplace. And that's how we met. Like, really? You're gonna shoot your shot on Facebook Marketplace? Who knew Facebook Marketplace was the horniest app of all? Only really, 10 minutes ago, I get another one, another swipe up that's like, you're so beautiful on it. Like, and I can't be mad about it. You know, like, I can't, I mean, I don't know, I'm just like, I'm mad about that one. I'm just like, okay, thank you. But like, buy the mirror. Like, no one wants to buy the fucking mirror. They just like never knew Facebook Marketplace was like this. Like, I just really never, and I, you know what? I should have fucking known because I think Facebook is one of the weirdest places ever. But also think I'm bent the fuck over, like, showing my entire body the way these men are acting about this mirror picture. To send me a video of you just jacking off, like, you need help. Like, you genuinely, you genuinely need help. You guys know I'm crazy, so then I'm like, what the fuck does this say about my energy? That I'm attracting these type of people on Facebook Marketplace who are, like, trying to buy the mirror. I'm like, what does this say about me? Like, what does this say about me? It's like, Libby, bitch, it's not that fucking deep. Like, it's really just not that deep. There's just creepy fucking people out there. But if you want to buy my mirror, let me know, because, like, clearly Facebook Marketplace is just trying to fuck. Honestly, if you do live in New York, DM me, and I'll just give you the mirror for free. Like, at this point, I'm just gonna give this iconic mirror away for free. So just DM me. Like you have to pick it up. Like you have to come get it, like take it down the stairs, like do all those things. But yeah, at this point, don't even give a fuck about selling it. Let me just get it off my Facebook marketplace. Am I wrong for telling my brother he cannot stay with me over Christmas if he brings his prosthetic leg? My younger brother has a prosthetic leg. I think it is creepy as heck and I have no idea where he got it. I'm reasonably certain that it is something I would rather not know. To be clear here, my brother has two perfectly healthy legs still attached to his body. He just has this thing he takes with him everywhere. I don't know why, I don't want to know. Before you ask yeah it is probably a mental health thing. He wanted to stay with me rather than our parents while he is home for the holidays. I said he was welcome to stay, as long as he doesn't bring that thing into my house. He said it wasn't a big deal and that he would leave it in his luggage. I agreed on the condition that if I saw it outside of his luggage in my home then I had the right to destroy it. He backtracked on staying with me and is at our parents' house, where he is miserable. They still treat him like a little boy instead of a guy who is almost 30. He called me again after supper and asked to please stay with me. I said he could as long as we, together, take his thing and put it into a storage unit until he leaves. I get the key. He won't do it. He says that I'm being a jerk for not letting him stay with me. I think he needs to get therapy or medication. Or both. Or a girlfriend. Boyfriend. Dog. Cat. Hamster. Something. Just not a god dang prosthetic leg. 